Hello everybody, my name is Adrian Iliesiu and I'm an engineer with the DevNet team uh, at Cisco. So in this lesson, we're going to start generating code with Postman. So we've seen in the previous lesson, um, Postman, we've had a look at the environment and the collection, we have that for you. And we did a couple of calls. So let me bring back Postman here. All imported, we went over um, all the calls, we explained you uh, the headers, the body of the calls, and all of that. In this lesson, what I want to show you is a very nice feature of Postman, the generate code feature. Let's start with doing one more authentication. We don't get anything back, so it looks like it went fine. If we would have gotten a reply back with HTML text in there, we would have known that the authentication failed. Uh, something happened. But in here, we have 200 OK, a bit less than a second to return and to authenticate us. So we have now the cookie, and we're, we can proceed to with our other calls. But what I actually want to show you in this lesson is the code option right here. So the generate code snippets option. You have the option within Postman to generate code for your language of preference here. You see there's C Sharp, supported Go, Java, JavaScript, uh, PHP, Ruby, Swift. Uh, we will actually generate Python code and it will be the request library that we want to use. And this is what happens right here. So generated the code for, for us. It got the URL, which is basically our endpoint resource that we were talking so far about. And this was basically pre-populated from the collection. And also these values were taken from the environment, from the variable environment, uh, variables environment that we've set up. And the same goes for the payload, the username, and the password that you, you should remember. We had it defined in the environment. And also the headers, the content type, this application URL encoded for, like we were seeing in the previous lesson, and then the Postman token. This we're not going to need. We're going to actually remove it. And also the cache control, no cache. And in this case, we're using the request library. And we'll have an in-depth discussion about the request library in the next section, where we're going to start talking about the application, the Python libraries we're going to use to develop our own scripts and applications around Python. So I'm not going to insist too much, but request library is a Python library used to interact with REST APIs, to do get calls, post, put, delete, like we've seen so far with Postman and the Swagger documentation. Uh, the request library gives us this option of doing these calls and interacting with REST APIs through Python scripts, basically. So we have the URL, which is our endpoint. We have the payload. Um, and then to do our actual request, we're going to use request library and we're going to use the request method from that library. And we're going to use the request method from the request library. We're going to do a post call. The URL gets populated from here. The payload is going to be sent as data. And the headers are going to be taken from there. And the response, contain, the response variable in this case contains the response from that post uh, request that we're doing. So the response will contain the response. Uh, and then what we do, we print the text object of, of the response, right? So the text attribute from the response um, variable. So let's copy to clipboard. So we have copy to clipboard. We go now in our IDE. And I'm using here Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever IDE you prefer. I have an untitled one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the code that I copied. And I'm going to do a couple of modifications. So I'm not going to need the Postman token. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a verify false 
because we have a self-signed certificate. False. And then I'm going to save this file. So straight out of Postman, a couple of modifications here. And let me save as, uh, it gives me the option. I'm going to go one level up and save it here as a Python file. And let's just call it Postman2. Postman 02. So we'll save it. And now, next, let's run this uh, and see what happens and start interacting with the code a bit. So if I go here, I'm opening my Git bash. Uh, we installed Git also on this, and I'm using Git bash. I already started the virtual environment. You can see here. We have the virtual environment started. I'm in the slash Adrian directory on the desktop, and I'm ready to have a look at my code and start running the script that we just saved. So if I do a print working directory, I need to go, if I do a directory here, I can see my Postman02 file, right? It's saved right here. So we're going to run this script in an interactive mode and play a bit around with the variables in there. So let's do next Python postman02.py. But I want to run this in interactive mode so that I can play around. Once the script finishes running, I can access the variables and okay, and show you some uh, some features of this. So we get here an insecure request warning, which is fine. Uh, that's just a notification, a warning for us to notify us that the uh, certificate is self-signed on this vManage instance, and we know that. And then I would like to see what are the attributes of the response variable. So we see what calls can we do and what attributes this specific object has within the response object has uh, available for us. So we've seen Postman suggested that we should look at the response.txt, which um, it's somewhere here. But we can also have a look at the um, content, we can have a look at the cookies. So we can actually have a look and extract the cookie from this response. We can have a look at the JSON. We can also check the status code of this response or the URL or the text that Postman suggested is right here. Right, so these are all attributes that are available for this object, for the response object or variable that's available for us and contains the response from the post request. So if I do now a print response that status code, let's check to make sure that it went fine. We got a 200, right? So that's how you access basically the status code attribute or response. If I'm trying to see the cookie that was generated, I'm just going to access with the dot cookies, and I see the cookie right for my request. And I can have a look at all these other options in here. JSON, see what it contains, the JSON attribute. As method response. You can see here very easily how you can generate code with Python, with, with Postman, Python code in this specific case. We copy pasted this. We created a new file with our Visual Studio code, a new Python file. We just added a couple of small modifications. So in here, 
the request library is important to keep in mind. That's the library that we use to interact with the REST API to do our post call here. And we use the request attribute of the request library. We store the response in the response variable. And then we've seen here how to access the text, also status code, status code. We've seen how to access the cookies. And JSON. And basically, we DIR response. We've seen all the attributes that are available for the response object in Python, right? Um, then the URL gets populated right from there. Then the data, the payload, which is the username and password, and the headers, and then the verify false signifying that we don't want to check for the SSL certificate authenticity with this. So now you see how all the components come together, how Postman, how the environment in Postman. So basically these two these values and then the username and password, right? So all these four values were taken from the environment that we've set up and the collection also contributed to building all of this code. And then we saved it, ran it in, um, in Python, and had a look at all the options available. Extremely easy, no real knowledge required to get you started with this. Generate your code, take it, uh, modify it, and uh, build your own applications. So that's all I had to show you. In this course, thank you so much for watching, and I hope it has been uh, informative for you, and I hope you keep watching our, our videos and enjoy them. Thank you so much.